I love operating on the heart. I mean, I just absolutely love it. The first time I got to operate on a heart was when I was in medical school. I was actually in a rural, sort of rural uh, town in Arizona. And this surgeon just let me like hold this heart and he let me hold the vessel he was sewing. And I was like, this is insane. Like the heart stops completely. You take them, take it. You basically just stop the heart entirely. The person is being kept alive with the machine. And you sew onto it and you put it back together and you hope to God when you take them off the pump, the heart starts beating again and it does and it's just incredible. <laughs> I am in my fourth year of surgical residency. I did four years of undergrad and after that I did four years of medical school. So I'm a doctor now and in order to be a surgeon you have to do a residency to train. It's either five or six years, and I have about a year and a half left before I graduate from surgical residency training. I will have done six. And then to be a cardiac surgeon, I have to do two or three years of cardiac surgery fellowship on top of that. So I still have a long ways to go. <laughs> I work about 80 hours a week in the hospital, and I am typically seeing patients on my service every morning, operating during the day. Probably once or twice a week I'll be on call, which means I'm there from 5 a.m. till like 9 a.m. the next day. And sort of same thing, you just are seeing consults, seeing patients, making sure patients are getting out of the hospital if they need to, taking care of the sick patients. Surgery is very challenging because we do work hard hours and you know, it's the best of the best in that go into surgery. It's very taxing. Everyone is very type A and it's very competitive. Cardiac surgery is more demanding than a general surgery job. Life's really on the line when you're operating on the heart, so people are pretty intense about it. It's a specialty. If you want to know which doctors believe their god, cardiac surgeons have the worst god complexes. I was a little bit worried about interviewing and being very public during this time of interviewing, mostly because there's not a lot of diversity in surgery. All the older physicians are straight white men. <laughs> I had plenty of them who were my mentors who were telling me, it's really hard to be a woman in surgery. Are you sure you want to do that? You know, do you want to have kids? If you have kids, you can't be a surgeon. My mentor had told me in medical school that I was too nice to be a surgeon, which is kind of a weird thing to say. And I was like, I don't know why surgeons have to be mean, but I guess that was just what they knew of surgeons. They are doctors who have been around for a while, so their experience is actually a little bit dated, and so their advice is not always helpful, and it's not always current. <laughs> and that can be frustrating. I mean, I graduated from medical school in 2018, so, you know, that was recent, and they're still talking about it. To make it even worse, now I want to do cardiac surgery. Well, cardiac surgery is completely dominated by men. Like cardiothoracic surgery and vascular surgery, it's like the good old boys club. Being very stuck in their way, it's very stubborn. They do the same thing every time. They don't like to change the way they do things. They don't change the way they operate. They kind of see hiring people in the same way. I'm a good surgeon, I can operate. I'm smart, but I just worry about having these added things that they're gonna look at and be like, oh, we don't want to deal with that. In their minds, they're like, all they care about is surgery and operating and they don't want to deal with any of the other, like, drama or whatever. So I think I was a little worried about what it would look like for me to be so public to a program that is considering me as an applicant. You just feel like you're kind of at a disadvantage just by being a woman. And then I don't think I've ever known anyone who was openly gay in cardiac surgery. So I was a little worried about the perspective and how that would affect my chances of getting into fellowship. I even had a medical student who reached out to me and said, I was just told that I can't be openly gay when I interview or else I'm not going to be able to get into a surgical residency program. They hide their significant others, they hide who they are because they're afraid that the people who are interviewing them won't accept them. It's not fair um, and it's absolutely ridiculous. For example, the surgical program I'm in, there is one queer person in every single class, which is huge. That's a huge population. 
of queer surgeons in one program. That's insane, like you don't hear about that. It's very accepted in our program and you know, we do a lot of diversity training and talk about it a lot, which is pretty impressive, especially being in North Carolina, which is the South. And so I'm very fortunate that that's accepted where I am. But not all programs are gonna be like that. Not all surgeons are gonna accept that. Coming out at work was hard, I think, because, well, for the first three years of residency, I was married to a man. <laughs> um, you know, I usually keep my professional and personal life separate because our jobs are hard and busy and taxing and, you know, most of the time we don't really have time to talk about our lives. So I didn't really talk about it. The closest of my friends who worked at the hospital knew that I was dating a woman. And most of them didn't say anything about it to anyone else, which is nice of them. But finally, I slowly started telling people would say something like, oh, are you seeing anyone? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm seeing this girl or something. It was very interesting. Like the first time I said it, I like could barely say it. I was like, I'm seeing a girl like that. And, um, and then I sort of got used to it after like the first like four or five times I had to come out. I was like, okay. I just felt like I was coming out every day. I still feel like sometimes I'm coming out, sometimes I go onto a service and I haven't seen this doctor for a while and they're asking me about my life and go, oh, yeah, I'm engaged to a woman now. Some of us live in these worlds that it seems like everything is so much better. A lot of the discrimination with Asians, but even the Black Lives Matter stuff and even just the recent shooting at the gay club in Colorado, I mean, all of that shows that we're just still very behind and I think it's just disappointing sometimes to see that just to see a lot of the discrimination happening you know every day it's these microaggressions that you hear where are you from like you're Asian that's very abnormal and then I actually wear a pride flag on my coat and a lot of my patients like look at that and go like, what is that? They're very taken aback. But a lot of patients who appreciate it will be like, oh, I really like your flag. That's so cool that you have that. From TikTok, I've kind of realized that I can show people that it's okay. When I was on TikTok, I kind of realized that there's this huge LGBTQ friendly community. At first, I never really posted. I just followed a bunch of people who were like openly gay and everyone who was very like friendly and open and welcoming. So my first post was basically me kind of coming out as being gay um, on TikTok. And I got like a lot of support <laughs> from people I don't even know, which felt good. Um, It felt good to kind of have this community that I never really knew existed. You know, it made me feel normal. You just feel less isolated. The one thing about TikTok that I love is that there's, there's like a space for everyone on there, the queer community, and there's this whole space just for Asians or Asian Americans who kind of have similar, you know, have grown up in similar situations as me or kind of understand the way that I feel about things. But I also really love being a representation for others, I think, because I never had that. Showing people that you can be openly gay and be in surgery, like, that's okay. We have plenty of gay surgeons. That's totally fine. There's no representation in the cardiac surgery world, and I've gotten a lot of good, positive feedback. You know, people saying, like, you really make me feel better about what I want to do. I feel like I can do it. I hope that people realize that, you know, being gay doesn't mean you can't be a doctor or a surgeon or whatever you wanna do. And despite the discrimination, the more representation that's out there, I think the better it'll be for everyone.